Oh, hello. Wizards of the Coast has finally done it. They have officially endorsed and sanctioned Popper as a supported format, both paper and digital, with a unified paper and digital ban list. Gatherer legality, WER sanctioning, meaning you can now play in fully legitimate Popper events at your local game store for Planeswalker points and an updated and attentive ban list. I never in my wildest dreams thought we'd be getting any of these things, but to be given all of them, it's every Popper player's dream come true. You can watch Wizards of the Coast's official announcement of these updates to Popper via a link in this video's description. But here, I'm gonna cover all of these items in this video right now. Out of all of it, most amazing of all is what the unified digital and paper popper legality list brings to the format. Wizards of the Coast has declared that any cards ever, digital or paper, printed as a common in any set are now legal in popper, both paper and digital. This is of course regardless of the set symbol on the card. That means that a total of, and I can't believe I am saying this, 415 commons that were previously not popper legal due to having never been printed at common on Magic Online are now popper legal. 415 commons from throughout Magic's history have been added to the format. Imagine a set designed just for popper where all cards in that set go straight into popper and in a way that's kind of what this is. It's as if we were given popper masters. Heck, it's 415 new cards. Master sets usually had about 256, so it's almost like we got two popper masters sets. It's epic, whatever you wanna call it. It's unprecedented, no matter how you look at it, it's the birth of a new age of Popper. And along with discussing the new ban list, the sanctioned WEP status for paper, I am gonna talk about which of those 415 brand new Popper cards are the most exciting. It may not exactly be Popper Masters, but it is, without a doubt, Wizards of the Coast Mastering Popper. So there's a lot to unpack here. Before I get to the literally 415 brand new Popper cards, let's discuss three. The three that are automatically banned in Popper with this update. So I suppose that it's really 412 new Popper cards because out of all of those, Three are so busted and so broken that Wizards play design, led by Ian Duke, felt that they needed to be banned automatically. Those three cards are Sinkhole, Hymn to Torok, and High Tide. The reasons for Sinkhole's preemptive banning should be clear. A mere two black mana to destroy target land would push pauper land destruction and mono black control lists beyond the pale of acceptable power limits. Him to Torok is much the same thing. Originally a common in Fallen Empires, the card was never available on Magic Online at the common level and thus was never pauper legal but its preemptive banning prevents mono-black control lists from spiraling out of control, as a two-card discard for two black is just too good for the format. Though out of all of these three, High Tide is one that I am most glad got the preemptive ban hammer. An instant for a single blue, High Tide makes it so that until end of turn, whenever a player taps an island for mana, that player adds an additional blue. This is a card that powers legacy decks, and in Popper, it would usher in overpowered combo decks, made more efficient with the fact that Merchant Scroll will now be Popper legal. Whoa. In fact, in looking through over 400 cards now being added to the Popper format, Merchant Scroll is one of the top cards I'd point to as bringing power to the format. A common from Homelands, Merchant Scroll is now legal and is going to bring with it some exciting new deck building opportunities. Merchant Scroll would have indeed been an excellent addition to the High Tide deck, finding exactly what you need when you need it. It's a little difficult to use as only being able to find blue cards in this format of commons can be tough at times. But then again, blue is the most powerful color there is in any format. Some of the cards you might be using Merchant Scroll to go find in these new decks are the likes of Ghostly Flicker, Snap, 
Capsize, Counterspell, Brainstorm, Mystical Teachings, and there's just so many more that are possible tutor options. This card is going to provide utility to decks that want it. With the new legality of all cards that were ever printed as a common now being Popper Legal, Blue and Red Elemental Blast are now Popper Legal. These were first printed in Alpha. The OG Blasts are finally here. No more of this weird back and forth of are these legal to play. No more awkward judge calls when you get in trouble because you saw these were listed as common on Gatherer. Well, Gatherer is being updated with true popper legality too, so that's nice, but Red and Blue Elemental Blast are finally truly here in the format for everyone to use. Hydro Blast and Pyro Blast are still marginally better, but the only deck this is usually going to be impacted is is it blitz so unless you're on that deck either one is perfectly acceptable it's great to finally have these in the format after so many problems and i can't wait for them to see proper play breath of life false defeat the first common printing was in portal and portal three kingdoms respectively and now we're talking. Resurrection was at the very top of my list for Ultimate Masters, and this is all that but better. Best of all, it's an excellent new reanimation tool for the format, something we rarely see. Even better still, Breath of Life and its rarer Portal Three Kingdoms printing False Defeat are, unlike Resurrection, both very splashable. This makes them an easy fit onto archetypes that are already quite well established, such as both Demir and Mardu Reanimator. Moving along, we also are now getting Flash, Flood, and Active Volcano. The first common printing was in Legends. Imagine if those elemental blasts had a weird cousin where instead of countering a spell, you could bounce a land of a relevant color. This ability makes for fantastic tempo plays against all kinds of decks and acts as a way to help you achieve your end game smoothly. Flash Flood is likely better due to blue having so little hard removal, but both are excellent additions to the format. Popper is also going to be getting Mystic Remora, a common first printed in Ice Age. Mystic Remora is one heck of an engine card. While it won't always be perfect for a number of matchups, such as creature-focused decks like Elves, Red Deck Winds, or Slivers, the matches it does line up well against are excellent. Consider this in a control mirror against a dirtily deck like Boros, which can play multiple spells per turn. Yes, at some point the cumulative upkeep becomes a bit much, but you can always just sacrifice it, or else use a bounce effect to put it back in your hand and play it all over again for your one-way trip to Value Town. Ashes to Ashes is going to be joining Popper, premium removal first printed in the dark at Common. And that's something that can really be hard to come by in Popper, but Ashes to Ashes does it handily. Five life is certainly a real cost, but remember that your life total is a resource, and it's very easy to benefit from this by taking down two creatures for only three mana. Also from the dark, we have Sunken City. Now, Sunken City is a weird card in that it's an anthem effect for blue, something the color rarely gets. The problem with Sunken City is that the effect is symmetrical, meaning that if you find yourself in a Delver mirror with the card in play, it basically does nothing in a number of circumstances. There have been players trying to build more dedicated blue aggressive decks as opposed to tempo ones, though, and for all those players, I imagine this will be a fine addition. I can also see this going in the fairy tribal decks that are starting to emerge ever since the printing of fairy Seer. Now here's some spice. Goblin Grenade, first printed at Common and Fallen Empires. Get your goblins ready. I would have thought they might have preemptively banned it along with him, Sinkhole, and High Tide, but I'm so glad they didn't. I guess Wizards feels the card is fine for the popper format, and so I'm brewing up goblins tomorrow. But if you want to talk about real potential, let's look at Ashnod's Altar. Ashnod's Altar is now popper legal! If you've ever had to play against someone who insisted on playing their Gave, Guru of Spores commander deck, or any commander deck that likes to sacrifice creatures, Really, you've probably seen the tremendously dumb things that can happen with Ashnaut's Altar. The card is capable of generating ridiculous amounts of mana, sometimes even being able to go infinite in the process. While I'm struggling to find an actual infinite combo in the format with the card, I'm sure it won't be difficult to find one with a little effort. And even if there isn't a full-on infinite combo, it's still going to be very, very possible to generate massive amounts of mana for, say, a giant Kavarex Torch or Rolling Thunder to close out a game. Consider trying this one with the likes of Sprout Swarm for maximum payoff. Here's an interesting one, Avoid Fate, first common printing in Legends. 
Yes, this is probably just worse than vines of vastwood in most, if not all, circumstances, but it's a great tool to have in Green's toolbox of cards. After all, the color doesn't have much by way of actual counter magic, so having one more card can help fill more slots for the decks that may want to protect some big old creatures. Coming at us from Ice Age is Essence Filter, which feels like it's really close at being a great tool for the likes of Bogles and other decks that focus heavily on white enchantments because it can help break locks with the right setup. Oh, now we're talking Dark Heart of the Wood, Another common from all the way back in the dark. Dark Heart of the Wood may not seem too great at first glance, but it's excellent for a number of various Golgari-based tortured existence decks. Those decks, after all, run Tilling Tree Folk, making it easy to recover lands you sacrifice to get more life. Those decks also run means of finding enchantments out of your deck, and sometimes getting them back from your graveyard as well, meaning this is a very easy inclusion into those decks. Gaia's Touch, first common printing was in the dark. Gaia's Touch is an incredible ramp spell that never got its chance to shine. If you've been around the format for a bit, you may remember a minor joke deck known as Dreadmoss Stompy, that featured, you guessed it, Big Bad Colossal Dreadmaw. Between the Dreadful Dino and Ravnica Allegiance's Wrecking Beast, it's very likely we could see cards like this, Sakura Tribe Elder, and the classic Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl combo show up again to help ramp out big creatures fast. Look at this, it's Felden's Cane coming to us all the way from Chronicles. Would we really run Felden's Cane and Popper now that it's legal? Well, effects that shuffle graveyards into decks are incredibly rare in Popper. For the longest time, players dreamed about getting Felden's Cane into the format so we could have the effect. But then we got Clear the Mind in Ravnica Allegiance. The printing of that card may have put a damper on this classic's debut into the format, but it's still very possible to use Felden's Cane in a number of non-blue decks instead. Desert, coming to us all the way from Arabian Nights, is now popper legal. Control decks, especially mono-black control, are going to absolutely love this card. Creatures in creature decks are often quite small in this format, and having Desert available in the format as a deterrent seems like big game for keeping aggressive decks in check. Tormod's Crypt, also first printed at Common and Chronicles, is now legal in Popper, so graveyards get wrecked. We've had cards like Relic of Progenitus and Nihil Spellbomb for quite some time now, but never something that could just be cast for free. That means you can drop it on turn one before your opponent has an opportunity to cast a Spell Stutter Sprite. Should you be trying to stop a Swirling Sandstorm preemptively, or even just trying to squeeze the absolute most out of your mana. Well, it can't replace itself with another card, not costing any mana to utilize in the first place makes up for it in spades. Here's a flashback to my awkward teen years, Unstable Mutation. This is a classic card for beefing up small creatures and going in hard and heavy for some serious damage. Remember that blue aggro deck I was talking about before? This is a great one for that. It could even spawn its own archetype of sorts with the likes of Slippery Bogle. This and other blue auras like Arcane Flight and Spectral Flight. You could even use it as an alternative option to the current Selesnia Bogle's build of the format. Sage of Latinam, coming to us from Antiquities, offers some interesting possibilities to artifact-based decks as a way to draw cards. This seems like an obvious fit as a one of or two of an affinity to help sift through your deck to find more gas, and combos especially well with the likes of Chromatic Star and Icker Wellspring. The card is, however, extremely fragile and doesn't do anything the moment it hits the board, meaning you might end up playing it and not getting any use out of it before its ability can be utilized. Still, it's a very unique effect with plenty of possibilities, possibly even in a deck we've yet to actually see in action. Now, there are actually a handful of cards that are being made popper legal that do not currently exist on Magic Online. Over the coming weeks, these cards will begin to appear in treasure chests. The emphasis is going to be on adding the more relevant ones, and although all of these won't be immediately added, they are coming to Magic Online and will simply be considered popper legal in this new unified popper format. Since there's a lot of commons being added, Wizards of the Coast is encouraging people to send their requests for which common cards to prioritize adding to Magic Online feedback at wizards.com. 
Again, these cards are all popper legal, but they're going to need some time to start appearing in treasure chests. So please write them and request that they do. Remember, if your local game store runs popper events or has been thinking of running popper events, popper is now an officially sanctionable format. Remind them to update their event status on the WPN so that you can not only earn Planeswalker points at full force for playing Popper, but so that we can send a message to Wizards of the Coast that this is indeed a format that people are playing. So get brewing because your local game stores can now hold official WEP sanctioned popper tournaments where you'll earn planeswalker points. Popper events are going on every day at every GP. Just go over to TurboTown and ask for some popper games or look for the daily popper event or Sunday double up. This is going on at every single GP every weekend that there is a GP. Popper is arrived. Popper has arrived as an officially sanctioned format with a singular ban list and card legality for both digital and paper. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. What is next for Popper? What do we want next? A GP? Hmm. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.